in this video, we prepare ethanol, otherwise known as acetaldehyde from ethanol. If we take a look at the structures of ethanol and acetaldehyde, we can see that a hydrogen molecule is missing. Normally, the hydrogen atoms get oxidized and removed as water. This is the case with the standard lab preparation of acetaldehyde, which comprises oxidizing ethanol with chromic acid. Aldehydes are sometimes difficult to prepare, because they are easily oxidized to the corresponding acids. So the question arises if it is possible to just remove hydrogen from a molecule of ethanol without oxidizing the hydrogen to water. Of course it is possible, if we ask that stupidly. When ethanol vapor is passed over very fine and hot copper powder, it will lose hydrogen and form acetaldehyde. This process was once used industrially, when the hydrogen byproduct was actually expensive enough to be sold for a lot of money. So let's get started. Here's our setup. As usual, we make the small tour. On the left, ethanol vapor is produced by heating ethanol in an Erlenmeyer flask equipped with a stir bar. This is heated by the hot plate below. The vapors are then passed into a fused silica tube. In the middle, there's some very fine copper powder sandwiched in between two pieces of fused silica wool. The dehydrogenation products, mainly acetaldehyde and hydrogen, are then lead into a gas washing bottle filled with water, where the acetaldehyde dissolves. The remaining hydrogen gas is flared of at a small glass tube provided with an anti-kickback device. Fill the flask with absolute ethanol and turn on the heating and stir in. As the air in the apparatus heats up and the ethanol vapor rises, some air gets pushed out of the apparatus. The gas flow soon increases. We have to wait until ethanol condenses in the combustion tube before we can heat the catalyst in order to avoid an explosion. Soon, the ethanol starts to boil and we can see ethanol condensing in the quartz tube. We can now start to heat the copper catalyst. The produced acetaldehyde then dissolves in the water and we can see a lot of hydrogen gas bubbling through. To prove that we are really removing hydrogen from ethanol, we collect a quantity of the escaping gas in a small test tube and hold the opening near the flame of the Bunsen burner. Hydrogen, as indicated by the whistling sound. Notice the green color from the copper. Let's see it again. Here's how the entire apparatus looks like during operation. Notice the increase in volume in the gas washing bottle. Since we can smell the aromatic, fruity and pungent odor of the acetaldehyde, but you can't, we have to make a test to prove that we have in fact prepared acetaldehyde. The easiest way to do this is to perform the Fellings test. Just dissolve one spatula of copper sulfate and tartaric acid in 10 cubic centimeters of water. After dissolution, 
Slowly add in sodium hydroxide solution until the light blue turns to a darker, more intense blue. Next dissolve some D-glucose in water. Our fellings solution is then added to three test tubes. To obtain accurate results, we perform the reference test with glucose, as this will give a positive result. We also perform the so-called blind test, which shows us whether the test solution itself is okay to use. To the third test tube, we add some of our acetaldehyde solution. Placing the test tubes in some boiling hot water will greatly improve reaction speed. As you can see, the glucose solution will react the fastest. After some time, the acetaldehyde solution will also react and prove that we have some kind of reducing agent in solution. The only candidate for this is acetaldehyde, so we have proven that the dehydrogenation of ethanol is possible. During the Fellings test, acetaldehyde gets oxidized to acetic acid, while the complexed copper 2 plus ions get reduced to copper 1 oxide. In our case, the copper ions got reduced to elemental copper, because we let the test tubes stand in the water bath for some time to give the acetaldehyde a chance to react. Sometimes, the Fellings test is difficult to perform with simple aldehydes like formaldehyde or acetaldehyde, because they are too strong reducing agents. There will be a separate video on the Fellings test so we tackle the reactions there. There's also going to be another video where we show how to isolate and purify the acetaldehyde. Our next video will probably be about the preparation of concentrated nitric acid or about the preparation of acetaldehyde with chromic acid.